So I'm reading another article in Al Jazeera, and the article in Al Jazeera uh, talks about the uptick in um, in violence, in white supremacist violence uh, since the election of Donald Trump. Uh, and it focused on a conversation by a Texas A&M University professor of philosophy, a black man. Um, he was discussing the fact that <clears throat> that he is receiving death threats against him and his family um, because he talked about because he talked about the usage of violence and weapons in the course of black liberation. In other words, because he talked about the historical context of violence being used as a means of accomplishing the liberation for black people, he now started receiving death threats. He wasn't talking about using current contemporary violence. He was talking about, you know, the violence in throughout, uh, you know, slavery, you know, and, and post-slavery and Jim Crow. But simply talking about it led him to getting death threats. And they were talking about the uptick since the uh, election of Donald Trump, and now they're in a place where um, we've seen almost 11, I believe, 1,100, almost 1,200 instances of hate crimes, or what they call it, a bias incidents. And because of those bias incidents, um, because of the large uptick, it represents the single greatest increase um, for that time period. And uh, out of those 1,100, almost 1,200 cases, uh, nearly 400 of those cases took place on college campuses. And those incidents are used as a means of terrifying black and brown people from opposing any form of white supremacy. And I, I what, jumps out to me first and foremost in this conversation are all of those people who are quick to fix their mouths in support of conservative right-leaning bigoted neo-nazis fascists and their right to have free speech and usually in opposition towards politically correct or people who want safe spaces how many people do we see who regularly come to the defense of Nazis, but yet not a single one of them have we heard say a damn thing about the number of hate crimes that are being committed, committed on college campuses since the election of Donald Trump? See, that's when you expose the underlying bigotry, the underlying biases that are conveniently um, whisked away or explained away with a certain type of liberalism. This is how, this is how you can get the Emmanuel Macron speech yesterday and people uh, uh, rationalize it away as not really being racism. You do that by getting people who can look and defend a Nazi but then say nothing when it comes down to defending marginalized communities. Because in their minds, they honestly believe that it is more difficult for the Nazi today than it is for the queer black woman. This is where you expose the bullshit because the data clearly shows you the insanely ridiculous uptick in hate crimes or bias incidents against marginalized communities since the election of Donald Trump. But all I ever hear is about, oh, Richard Spencer and Ann Coulter got shut down. But who cares about that when you have over 1,100 incidents, 400 of which took place on co college campuses just since November of 2016? They got as high as getting 87 reports a day from college campuses. But let's be concerned because, you know, two conservative right wing white nationalists were shut down across the country. But never mind about the 400 incidents of hate crimes that took place against marginalized groups. This is according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. 
if you're really concerned about that, if you listen, listen, I don't. Ignorance is not an excuse in this because you pretend, you purport to be the type of person that is uber concerned about the condition of free speech. Motherfucker, you should be looking at all the instances of people being silenced by hate crimes. You should know it. You should know it. Shout out to my dude, Dalton Crossway. I haven't heard from my man. He was like one of the original Progressive Army members hanging out in the chat room, man, all day. Glad to have you, man. Um, but I can't put Chelsea Manning on my ticket because uh, she would have to be the front. She'd have to be on the front of the ticket. It'd have to be Manning Dixon. I want to be, I want to, if Donald Trump is president, shit, I could be president. <laughs> anyway, um, but, but back to these people who are so concerned about the civil liberties and the right, the free speech of Nazis, but I haven't seen a single one of them talk about the number of African-American professors who have had their lives threatened because they talk about black liberation in historical context. And there you have it. And so this professor, he thought it was the height of hypocrisy and irony that um, the Texas A&M University actually is a university that allows uh, concealed carry to classes because they believe that it makes a safer environment um, despite the fact that he's getting debt threats from students as well as community figures. But having an historical context, uh, uh, an a historically nuanced conversation about um, the existence of violence in uh, black liberation throughout history, somehow that creates a dangerous environment, but not the fact that these students, some of which have, have given death threats, are free to carry concealed weapons. <sighs> 